Christmas is one of the most anticipated days in the entire year. Celebrated by billions of people around the world with feasting, gift giving, and visiting family. It's traditionally seen as a commemoration of the birth of Jesus Christ. However, the holiday's original roots are far different from that. Join us as we examine the true origins of the Christmas holiday. December 25th coincides approximately with the winter solstice, a day with great religious significance in ancient pagan cultures because the days begin to lengthen. Pagan religions often center upon the celestial cycles. Many of the ancient religious sites, such as Stonehenge in England, the Mayan temples of South America, or the Greek and Roman temples, were built in a way that coincided with the movements of the sun, moon, and stars. With this focus on the heavenly bodies, it's no surprise that one of the major feast days for religions all over the world occurred at the time when the sun's presence in the sky begins to increase, the winter solstice. The winter solstice is associated with the birth of the sun god, reappearing after months of greater darkness. In ancient Egypt, the winter solstice was the feast of Horus, the son of Isis, the goddess of nature. The gods Isis and Osiris and their son Horus are very common in most pagan religions, although at times under different names. In the myth of Osiris, the king marries his sister Isis and is murdered. But after his death, he conceives a child with Isis named Horus. This is a distorted version of the Christian religion where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is born of a virgin and dies for the sins of the world, but is raised from the dead after three days. It's thought that the myth of Osiris is the same as the biblical figure of Nimrod, mighty hunter and founder of Babylon, who supposedly married his mother, Semiramis, and was worshipped as a god after his death. Semiramis and Nimrod, mother and child, spread through the world as one of the major religious influences in opposition to Judaism and Christianity. The Babylonians celebrated the winter solstice with the Feast of the Son of Isis, commemorating it with gift-giving, partying, and gluttonous eating and drinking. The Romans also celebrated the winter solstice, calling it Saturnalia, honoring Saturn, the god of agriculture. It was a week of riotous partying and lawlessness from December 17th to the 25th. It was even sanctioned by the government. The courts were closed, and the law declared that no one would be punished for damage of persons or property during the celebration. As the Christian religion grew and began to hold an influential position in the Roman Empire, it did not remain uninfluenced by the culture itself. One ceremony adopted by Roman Christians was the celebration of the winter solstice, which became Christmas. Pope Julius I made it official in 350 AD, declaring that Christ's birth would be celebrated on December 25th, trying to synthesize with the Roman pagan religions by adding their feast to Christianity. However, the Bible does not say that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. It doesn't even record the date of his birth at all. It does say that the shepherds were with their sheep, putting the date of Jesus' birth probably sometime in the summer. This, however, did not stop the Pope. By turning the riotous feasts of Saturnalia into Christmas, many pagans were brought into the church with the promise that their feasts would not have to change. The Catholics also adopted the pagan gods, elevating the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus, to be a god, to parallel the ancient mother and child myth. The early Christmas holidays were celebrated like Saturnalia by drinking and singing naked in the streets, a precursor to today's caroling. Christmas was not the only time Roman Catholicism joined with an old pagan religion. Across the world, Roman Catholicism has great variation because it synthesizes with the religions it finds from paganism to voodoo, allowing people to join the church without changing their conduct or worship. Pope Gregory I wrote in 606 AD to Abbot Miletus, a missionary to England who would become the first bishop of London, advising him how to convert the Britons. He wrote, 
the temples of the idols among the people should on no account be destroyed. The idols themselves are to be destroyed, but the temples themselves are to be aspersed with holy water, altars set up in them, and relics deposited there. For if these temples are well built, they must be purified from the worship of demons and dedicated to the service of the true God. In this way, we hope that the people, seeing that their temples are not destroyed, may abandon their error and flocking more readily to their accustomed resorts, may come to know and adore the true God. And since they have a custom of sacrificing many oxen to demons, let some other solemnity be substituted in its place, such as a day of dedication or festivals of the holy martyrs whose relics are enshrined there. After the Protestant Reformation in the 16th and 17th centuries, many Reformed Christians became discontent with the Christmas holiday, which had been celebrated by Pope Paul II in 1466 by having the Jews run naked through the streets of Rome. They wished to depart from these riotous practices. Increase Mather, an American Puritan, wrote in 1687 that the early Christians who first observed the Nativity on December 25th did not do so thinking that Christ was born in that month, but because the heathens, Saturnalia, was at that time kept in Rome, and they were willing to have those pagan holidays metamorphosed into Christian ones. Many also believed that holidays should only be celebrated if they were commanded in the Bible. The celebration of Christmas was illegal in Calvin's Geneva. In 1647, after the English Parliament prevailed over the king in the English Civil War, they outlawed the observance as well. It was not reinstated as a public holiday in Scotland until 1958. This view was brought over to the New World. And when the Puritans settled in America, in some areas, the celebration of Christmas was outlawed entirely. The pilgrims who settled in Plymouth were opposed to the celebration of Christmas. But they allowed freedom of conscience to those who disagreed. The governor allowed them to take the day off of work. But when he found them playing games in the streets, he told them they must make it a day of worship or not celebrate it at all. Over the next decades, the celebration of Christmas increased as theology became more liberal. During the American Revolution, the holiday declined greatly in popularity, being seen as an English custom. George Washington made use of the holiday in 1776 by attacking the Hessians at the Battle of Trenton during their celebration. Subscribe and check back soon for the rest of this video explaining the renewal of Christmas and why we celebrate as we do today.